Oh, geez, the Skrillex story that uh, goes way back and is so long and is kind of sad, but it is what it is. Uh, I, I actually found Skrillex uh, through a friend of mine who was uh, producing a record online, and Sonny uh, was contributing parts to this record. Uh, and um, uh, I, I guess as fate would have it, we both went to some event, and Sonny showed up. Was just we were all just hanging out at the back, and Sonny gave me his album on a USB key, and I took it home and listened to it, and I was like kind of blown away because this was this was before you know dubstep dubstep was even dubstep. You know, it was well what you know it is now. Dubstep back then sounded more like just reggaeton with you know some very small hints of electronic in it. That, to me, is what dubstep is. And then when someone says, oh, hey, I, I love this dubstep, and I'm like, that's not dubstep. That's like it's drum half-tempo drum and bass, like tech shit, you know? So, But he was the first that I've ever heard of it, and uh, it really did not have a huge following in North America. So I thought, well, shit, let's put his thing out and see if he could fly. Um, and it did very well. His uh, first album that we released on Mousetrap did insanely well. So well, in fact, that his old record label that had a contract on him that didn't give a shit if he was making electronic music or not decided to pull the leash on him again and took him back. And, and then I said, hey, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not even going to fight with that shit. So he went off and did his thing and then broke off and started his own label. And then, you know, dubstep became oversaturated and overplayed and overproduced and everyone was Skrillex at the time so I just kind of let him do his own thing and you know he didn't really want to break away from that and that's his choice so fair play to him um, uh, I criticized uh, the Jack you where are you now I mean I don't know it was there's it was a money play as far as I'm concerned it's like uh, of all the talented singers in the world you had to pick the one that could sell a billion records overnight because you thought it sound better I don't think so dude <laughs> you wanted to sell records which is fine but I mean if you're gonna throw that kind of money at a music production in a video dude come on go balls to the wall do something mind-blowing you know that would even turn heads of the you know the EDM chin strokers of me because it just sounded like another thing like the, the two of them could shit out in 20 minutes as they probably did too I mean I was like, yeah, it's cool, I guess. But it's just, I was disappointed because it, it didn't make me go, holy shit, and eat my own fucking ass. Because um, it just it just was lazy sounding to me uh, in terms of, you know, the work put into it. So that's, I just didn't like it. And that was my opinion. That's all. <laughs>